One of the biggest challenges you'll face in 3D printing is making sure that the print is stuck to the surface that you're printing on for the first layer and of course the rest of the print, but not so well stuck that you can't actually get it off afterwards. One print surface might have the solution for this. So let's take a look at PrintBite Plus. Hello everyone, my name's Adam and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at PrintBite Plus, a print surface from Motley 3D that claims not only universal material support, but also self-release, meaning that as the print surface cools down, the print just comes off. That's quite a bold claim, so I think we should probably test it. For the testing, I wanted to use my Mark III because it has that spring steel sheet, of course, that I can just take off and put another one on. The downside is that the PrintBite Plus doesn't come with a spring steel sheet. Of course, it's just a print surface. So I got in touch with BuildTac and they kindly provided one of their flex plate surfaces, which is basically just spring steel, the same as the Mark III. And that fits perfectly. As you can see here, it even has the little notches for the alignment on the Mark 52 bed on the Prusa Mark III. One slight downside of this flex plate is that it has some pretty bad burrs on the end. I mean, bad, they're just quite sharp. You can get rid of these with either a deburring tool or a small file larger file but it won't be as nice after you've done that it's pretty much just perfect fits fine it's the right size and it does the job applying the print by surface to the flex plate was fairly easy it comes with an adhesive back you just need to carefully align it to the plate and peel away the backing once it's fully stuck down i used a knife around the edge to trim off the excess as the print bite doesn't come in a size that fits perfectly the instructions suggest heating the plate to 100 degrees c and leaving it there for an hour with a weight on top in order for the adhesive to fully cure once the curing process had finished, I left it to cool and then used acetone, as per the instructions, to clean all my finger oils off the surface. For the test print file, I found this warp test file on Thingiverse, which is basically just a long cuboid. It does have some little kind of notches in it as well, just presumably to help you gauge by looking down at how much it's warped. But it's not very complicated. I'll leave a link for the file in the description below. The materials I'm going to be testing are PLA, PETG, ABS and ASA. The reason for those materials is that that's what I have. The results from the test are as follows. PLA had no issues at all. As you might expect, PLA doesn't tend to warp at all, so adhesion to the bed was fine. It remained stuck to the bed for the duration of the print and released totally without effort after cooling. PETG was also successful. The first layer went down fine. It stayed stuck for the duration of the print and released easily once cooled. So this right here is the DAS filament PETG warp test. Now PETG doesn't generally warp that much, but it's done a pretty good job of holding it down for the duration of the print, as you can see. Now I've left it to cool and it's about 38 degrees on the bed, 37 on the nozzle. And now we're going to remove the print. I wanted to do this all in one take and make sure you understand that this is not fake. I've not already taken it off the bed. This is at the end of the print and it's still cooling down, right? I've not removed this at all before. And this is how easy it is to remove from the bed. ABS was not perfect. The first layer went down all fine and it didn't warp significantly during the print. Well, maybe a tiny bit, but only really very tiny bit at the corners. The, the issue though is that during cooling, as the kind of adhesion to the bed reduced, the material hadn't necessarily cooled at the same rate and there was still a lot of internal stresses that caused the print to actually bend upwards in the middle. So if you were to sit it on the surface, you'd see like a gap in the middle and the four corners touching. So that was a bit of a weird one. ASA had slightly more issues. The first layer went down kind of all right, but after literally a couple more layers, the warping started and you can see this one didn't even get very far at all. I did try a number of times using different filaments, different calibration and clean the bed, etc. to see if it would stick, but didn't have really any luck. Maybe I'm just a bit of an idiot because ASA should generally warp less than ABS. So it does seem a little bit strange that I managed to get ABS to stick pretty much without issue, apart from the cooling thing, but ABS just ASA rather just didn't seem to want to stick down very well. In the end, I decided to try a non-warp test, but just standard prints. And that's what these two are. These are both ASA and they've printed pretty much fine. There is some slight artifact on the bottom from where it did release 
I'm not sure if it was during print or during cooling. I suspect looking at it that it was uh, during print, but it can print ASA kind of fine, but don't try and print stupid shapes like this because it will warp. Now the Tesla Rover, here are some kind of thoughts or considerations that you might want to think or consider. If you're thinking or considering purchasing a new surface, potentially this one, or a flex plate system. One big advantage of a self-release system like this is that you don't have to touch the surface to get the print off. Now, you might think, well, I don't mind touching it. I can just leave it to cool a bit and then it's fine. Well, it's not so much you touching the hot bed that's the problem. It's the fact that your oily fingers get on the bed, the oil spread as it gets warm, and then you'll have to clean it more and more often in order to retain, retain the same printing properties. When comparing to, for example, a standard PEI surface or a flex plate system, one issue that I did seem to find with this is actually getting it consistently flat. Now, I've not measured it, so this is kind of a best estimate as to one of the reasons why potentially ASA released from the bed more than it would likely have otherwise. I think one side of this material is slightly thicker or the adhesive is slightly thicker, or it's just not gone down quite flat. So by using the Mark III's leveling procedure, that's basically leveling according to the steel sheet, which is probably very consistent, but the material on top is probably not. So you have this kind of ramp effect and the uh, nozzle kind of detects the steel and not the surface. So, I mean, it's probably a combination of factors between the Mark III using its uh, calibration technique and maybe some slight inconsistency in the surface thickness, which leaves you with a kind of a high side and a low side. I know the Mark III can have this kind of manual adjustment, but it's not really great. So that's one thing to be aware of. If you're doing manu manual leveling, which you may well be if this is the kind of surface you're looking for, then I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. It's really a very minor difference from one side to the other. Having considered those considerations, here are now my recommendations. If you have a large printer, and I mean really like large, large, and you're normally printing maybe PLA or PETG and not ASA or ABS unless you're maybe in an enclosure, then this is probably a really good system for you because you have maybe large prints that take a very long time. You don't want any risk of that print coming off. This material does stick very well to the PLA and PETG. One problem you have with large prints is they can be really difficult to get off a bed, especially if the bed is rigid and your print is rigid. There's no flexibility, you end up trying to hack it off and all that sort of stuff. Or maybe if you're using glue, it just ends up really messy and horrible. This is a great thing for large prints because it does, it just, you'll see in the video, it literally just comes off. You just poke it and anything just moves. It's, if you're, not someone with a large format printer, but are looking for a new print surface and you don't want to pay for a flex plate system, again, very good option. It does obviously work with ASA, ABS, PLA and PTG. Less so maybe with ASA, but it's still a very good surface. And again, the ability for prints to just come off, like I don't like using that phrase because it sounds a little bit over the top, but you'll see in the video, they literally do just come off. They you just lift it and it's like it's not even attached. Bloody ridiculous. The last people that might want this is for people that print normally onto glass. Now glass is a great surface for printing onto for some reasons, such as it being very flat. It's a fairly good conductor, or is it? I don't think it is. But anyway, glass is very flat, which is good for printing onto but you can't bend it afterwards. Now, by putting this surface maybe onto the top of your glass, you then don't have to flex your glass in order to get it off. You remove the glass with this on it, and then the print will just come off later as it cools down. Whether the glass will affect its ability to maybe expand, and I don't know how the adhesion thing works. It's basically magic as far as I can tell. So yes, if you have glass, probably a fairly good option for you. So my final thoughts. My recommendations for this surface would have been very different a couple of years ago. Before there were any flex plate systems, everyone just mounted their surface to something like the actual heated aluminium bed or onto just a piece of glass or something like that. Everything was kind of rigid. So where you can't flex it and you just want the print to release without having to attack it, this surface would have, I probably recommend it to basically everyone. The problem is now flex plate exists and it's really quite a popular system and it's a very good system, I think. I personally prefer a 
a surface that will hold the print even after it's cooled, but then I can flex it off afterwards. The fact that it cools during the printing gives you strange things like this, where during the cooling, the middle of the print actually raises. So I'd rather it actually hold the whole thing sturdy until I want to remove it. Also, if you have something like a Mark III where you have power loss recovery, you might lose it. You might lose power during a print and then it cools down and your print will literally deliberately come off. I mean, yeah, maybe that's a very specific scenario and I don't think it really applies to a lot of people, but I would rather it stay stuck all the time until I want to take it off. That's all. As a side note for the testing and stuff that I did do, I didn't actually use this as a flex plate. I literally just used it as a magnetic mounting surface for the thing. Once it was to get the prints off, I didn't ever flex it at all. It was just literally a way to mount it. In the interest of full disclosure, the print surface was provided to me by Ooze Nest for review, but no money has changed hands and all opinions expressed are my own. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to purchase one. So that's it for my review on the Print Bite Plus print surface. If you want to see more like this, don't forget to like and subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and even support me on Patreon if you want to. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.